Oh, hey! <laughs> What's cooking? Well, other than me, I'm just open up a new brew for the newly spoiled The Pride of the Whole Clay from the upcoming Murders at Carlo Manor. Let's take a look. The Pride of the Whole Clay is something out of a Timmy Fever dream, which makes it the perfect commander. For 11 mana, you get a 2 power, 15 toughness, legendary crocodile elk turtle, which is the sickest creature type I've ever seen. The Pride costs X less to cast, where X is the total toughness of creatures you control, so we're never paying 11 mana for this. It also makes it incredibly resilient, as our walls can also reduce commander tax. The Pride also has Defender, and an activated ability for 2 and 2 blue. Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0, gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to its toughness and can attack as though it didn't have defender. That means we could draw up to 15 cards we hit just once with our commander. Realistically, I see this card as costing 5 mana, 1 for the actual casting cost, and then 4 for the activated ability which we want to use that first turn, allowing it to swing if we have a haste enabler on board, or pumping up one of the support creatures used to ramp it out. On the outside, the Pride of the Whole Clade looks like another Toughness Matters commander like Doran or Arcades. However, the Pride of the Whole Clade is actually, well, quite prideful and cares very little about our other high toughness creatures. As a result, our deck is going to rely heavily on having our commander in play and lean toward a more Voltron-ish strategy. Not to worry though, as its first ability makes casting it over and over super easy. So here are the three main strategies that we want to target. First, reducing the casting cost of our commander. Rather than traditional ramp spells, the fastest way to power out our commander is actually by playing high toughness creatures. Second, exploiting that powerful activated ability by reducing its cost and stacking it multiple times on our commander or powering up our other creatures. And lastly, taking advantage of that massive 215 body. Let's give it some evasion and see if it can't deal 15 damage on hit. Our primary win con will most likely be through combat damage either from our commander or our supporting high toughness creatures, or by pinging effects from drawing so many cards. With these strategies in mind, let's take a look at the decklist. First off, let's start with our veggies. In our ramp category, we're avoiding green classics like Cultivate and Rampant Growth in favor of ramp effects attached to bodies that in turn reduce our commander's high cost. We have some traditional Toughness Matters mana dorks with Axe Bank Guardian, Wall of Roots, Vine Trellis, and Overgrown Battlement. Next, we're running Farhaven Elf, Wood Elves, Spring Bloom Druid, and Sporosis to both ramp us with lands and reduce the cost of our commanders by one, effectively getting us two mana closer to casting the pride. Rounding us out, we're running two mana rocks, the classic Soul Ring, and then Thought Vessel to help us hold on to those 15 cards we hope to draw. Next, let's look at our removal. Simic removal loves to replace problematic creatures with tokens or turn them into useless bodies like with Pongify or Kenra's Transformation. We need our commander to hit players, so creating extra blockers is a no-go. So let's gain some tempo advantage by bouncing our opponent's creatures and letting our Croco Elk Tortoise Boy <laughs> hit for damage. Snap and Snapback can be cast for free to remove a blocker and leave his mana to activate the pride's ability. Imprisoned in the Moon is one of my favorite budget removal spells as it completely traps an opponent's creature and removes it as a blocker. Reclamation Sage and Return the Nature deal with artifacts and enchantments, with Rex Sage also reducing the cost of our commander by one. Muddle the Mixture and Dispersal Shield can help protect our commander from being removed, with the former allowing us to tutor for key pieces like Assault Formatia via Transmute. And finally, Consuming Tide, Engulf the Shore, Profaner of the Dead, and Washout are mass bounce effects that can leave our stuff alone and free up some good attacks for our commander. Our last veggie category is our card draw. Since our commander can draw us up to 15 cards, it felt unnecessary to spend too many card slots drawing us cards that we better spent supporting our commander's game plan. Instead, let's take a look at some card selection options that can help us dig for the pieces we need to make the deck hum and get us out of a bind if necessary. Overwhelmed Apprentice, Omen Speaker, and Demir Informant can help us dig for answers while also helping to reduce the cost of our commander. Frantic Search digs two cards deep for essentially free, while Stern Lesson gives us some card selection while also helping reduce the cost of our commander's activated ability by creating a Power Stone token. Finally, the classic Eternal Witness allows us to replay the best card from our graveyard, giving us a second use out of one of those mass bounce effects or recovering a key piece that was removed. That rounds out our veggies, so let's take a look at our primary three strategies, the meat and potatoes of our deck. While we still want to be responsible and ramp into the spells in our 99, realistically the most efficient way to cast our commander is by playing walls and other high toughness creatures. That way you can consistently cast a pride on turn 3 or 4. Riptide Turtle, Wall of Tangle Cord, Wall of Junk, Glacial Wall, Hover Barrier, Wall of Frost, and Wall of Ice are all super high toughness walls that reduce the cost of the pride. Thrawn Spider does the same while also creating a Power Stone token that helps pay for the pride's activated ability. Skin Shifter can turn into a 0-8 plant that nearly reduces our commander to 1 mana all on its own, while Crashing Drawbridge reduces the pride's cost by 4 while granting haste provided that the drawbridge comes down the turn before. 
Wall of Tears is a good rattlesnake effect, warding off crit attackers by threatening to bounce them back to hand, and Wall of Stolen Identity copies the best creature on the board while also neutralizing it as a threat. Drift of Phantasms and Shield Wall Sentinel both act as tutors, with Drift of Phantasms transmuting to get one of our three mana spells, and Shield Wall Sentinel finding one of our defender creatures like Walking Bulwark, which we'll discuss in a minute. Last but not least, we have Carrix the Raging Isle. Carrix is a great sidekick for the pride to target, and if we're lucky, can swing for 17 while also drawing 17 cards. Our next strategy is to make that active ability a little more manageable. We talked about Thrawn Spider and Stern Lesson double dipping as pseudo ramp and card selection while also granting a Power Stone token account towards that two generic man in the prize activated ability. We also have Biomancer Familiar that can reduce the cost to just two blue mana, making multiple activations well within our reach. Similarly, the Enigma Jewel is like two Power Stones stapled together, tapping for two generic mana but it can also craft with four or more null end cards with activated abilities of which the deck runs 18 to turn into the Locus of Enlightenment, which effectively doubles the prize ability, allowing us to target two creatures or stack it twice per activation while also embodying the abilities of all the cards used to craft it. Lastly, Illusionist Bracers can equip to our commander and also copy those activations, potentially allowing us to draw 30 cards per hit. This commander really is unbelievable. Two of the biggest drawbacks to the Pride of the Hulk clade is that your game plan is incredibly telegraphed and you must deal combat damage to a player in order to draw those oodles of cards. So we need to somehow sneak our monster Crocodelka Turtle Boy past our opponents completely unnoticed. Some well-timed mass bounce effects as mentioned earlier, like Consuming Tide, Engulf the Shore, Profane of the Dead, and Washout can go a long way in clearing the board for good attacks while also acquiring us some tempo advantage. This isn't a control deck, I promise. Another option is to make our commander just straight up unblockable. Since this is such a key part of our strategy that we can't afford to not find, we're running 11 different options for redundancy. Artful Dodge and Distortion Strike are cheap ways to make the pride slip through while also allowing us for a second use through Flashback and Rebound. Aqueous Form, Aether Tunnel, and Cloak of Mists are auras that grant a more permanent solution, all granting unblockable. Key to the City offers a reusable option while also drawing us a card if we like, however if we get a hit in and we draw that 15 cards we're hoping for, we won't need that extra card, and we won't miss the one we pitched to make the pride unblockable. Suspicious Bookcase offers another repeatable effect, although that 3 to activate is a steep price in context with the 4 we have to pay for our commander's ability. Good thing we talked about ways to get that cost down. Mistford River Turtle makes one creature unblockable as long as it attacks with it, and its 5 toughness goes a long way toward our commander's cost. Sword Coast Sailor allows the pride to sneak through for damage as long as we attack the right player, and Wonder gives it the best keyword ever, as long as it's in the graveyard. We are running 4 other cards that can potentially discard Wonder to loot or surveil effects, but most likely we can just discard it to hand size after we draw that magical 15 cards. Finally, we're running a budget staple in Champion of Lamholt. We're trying to ramp up the pride through playing high toughness creatures which will in turn trigger Champion of Lamholt, which then gets bigger and makes our commander easier to cast. But most importantly, all of our creatures have super low power, meaning we only need like 3 triggers before Champion makes our commander and the majority of our team completely untouchable. The next aspect of this strategy is taking advantage of that 15 toughness. I don't want to be hitting our opponents for 3 with the Pride of the Whole Clade, let's smack them for 15 commander damage. Twisted Image and Reverse Polarity are great combat tricks that can swap our commander's power and toughness, but it gets expensive to cast these after paying for our commander's 4 mana activation cost. Treefolk Umber is a more permanent option, granting a plus 2 boost and providing some protection in case our Elka Turtle Croc eats a removal spell. Walking Bulwark is a fantastic option, giving one guy haste, allowing a defender to attack, and lets the pride hit for 15. Bedrock Tortoise is even better, as it protects our board against instant speed removal while allowing our whole team to deal damage equal to their toughness. The best option though is a tried and true assault formation. It gives us everything we want, damage equal to toughness, defenders to attack, plus a pump effect all stable on a hard to remove enchantment. While all those bells and whistles are fine and dandy, how does this deck actually win? The most reliable option is probably through good old fashioned combat damage. With any luck, our commander can quickly become a 2 turn clock for our opponents through commander damage, but let's look at a couple other options. Psychosis Crawler is a tried and true card draw win con, allowing us to ping each opponent for every card we draw. If the game plan works and we draw those 15 cards, Psychosis Crawler will mow everyone down for 15. If this happens more than once, you probably just won the game. Next up is probably my favorite synergy in the whole deck. Giralf Visionary Stitcher has a 1-4 body, reducing our commander's casting cost by 4, but his activated ability is where things start to get really interesting. For 1 blue, he can tap and sacrifice the pride of the whole clay to create a 15-15 flying zombie token. Do this on an opponent's end step, and you're swinging for 15 that turn. But it gets better. That 15-15 token also counts towards the commander's higher casting cost, allowing us to cast the pride for only 1 green mana, leaving up enough mana to activate its ability and draw 15 cards off our flying zombie token. Repeatedly sacrifice our commander to Giralf and crowd 
driving the board with flying 1515s is a surefire way to win, or eat a board wipe. Which is why we're running a couple of extra protection pieces in addition to our two counter spells. Our trusty swift foot boots gives us the protection we need, while more importantly giving our commander haste, and Tamiyo safekeeping is a one-time protection against most answers to our commander. Curse you, farewell. Finally, let's take a quick look at our mana base. Access Tunnel and Rogue's Passage grant us some backup evasion to make sure the pride makes contact, while Mishra's Factory can animate into a 2-2 for 1 mana, effectively netting us 1 mana closer to reducing our commander's casting cost. Alchemist's Refuge allows us to cast things at flash speed, which, while immensely powerful on its own, basically grants our commander haste by allowing us to cast it on our opponent's end step. Thespian Stage is a fantastic land to run in most decks, allowing us to copy the best land on the table, which is fantastic if we're playing against higher budget decks. I definitely pay to and tap to build my own Nick, though, so thank you very much. Command Tower, Simic Growth Chamber, Tangled Islet, and Yavimaya Coast provide some light mana fixing, and finally, we're running 24 basics, 16 islands, and 8 forests. Our commander is very hungry for blue mana due to its activation cost and the support cards, so we're running very heavy on blue. You may notice the very low land count, only 33, but the sheer amount of cards our commander is capable of drawing can quickly mitigate our low land count. One instance of drawing 5 or more cards, and we should be fine to make our land drops. Also, our average mana value for the deck is 2.54, so we really don't need exorbitant amounts of mana. Just be sure to mulligan smartly, and don't keep a 2 land hand. And with that, we've reached the end of the deck list. Not counting our commander, which is still on pre-order at the time of recording, the final cost of our deck comes to a grand total of $28.42 at near mint. Be sure to check for played or non-English cards to bring that total down even further. Thank you for checking in with us at our kitchen table as we've taken a look at the new Pride of the Whole Clay from the Murders of Carlo Manor. A deck list is in the description below. Let us know what you think, if there's any cards you would slot in or take out. Yeah, remember to like and subscribe. Praise Asmore and bon appetit.